hello welcome back to my channel thank you for coming back and as always um huge massive thank you for the support so today i'm coming back with the current members free gift at hunky jewelry which is the fairy wishes deluxe card collection um so this is the green fairy which is just believe um that's the title all of these um sheets in the corner they'll have a, a heading and i always put that on my videos um just in case you've got a kit there um you can just type it in that um and it should come up my you know if i've done a video on it it'll bring up that exact exact top of sheet that i've done so um i'm going to be using probably both the sheets of um cards up with the two cards today i've got this sheet of the the paper out and i've also got a piece of the adorable scoreable not sure which one i'm going to use um so i've got them both out just in case okay so i am going to start with a piece of six by 12 cardstock and i'm going to bring in my scoreboard and i'm going to score this as if we would for a normal six by six card just going to get that burnished down of this porcelain bone folder that's got a little bit of a mark there I'll do that with the eraser in a second. I'm going to pop that out of the way. Bring in my cutter. I'm just using the same cardstock. So I'm going to take a piece the same um, size, 6x12. And this is the 300 GSM. And I need one piece that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 by 6 So if I... One, two, three, yeah, four by six. Oh, that's not working that, is it? No, bear with me two seconds. Since that's deciding it's not going to cut today, let's just take that out of the way. And we'll use this small guillotine. Okay, I might have to use another piece of card, but... Um, and this is just ink that I've got here because I've doing some bits and pieces. So again, we're going four by six. And then the second piece needs to be five and a half by four. So let's see if we can get... I might be able to loosen that up. That's there, and then five and a half. Okay, I think that should be right. Let's pop that to the side and then we'll bring that scoreboard back in. So we'll do this one first of all, the five and a half by four. And I'm going to score at a half an inch and at one and a half. And then that should leave four inches square there. And this one, I'm going to pop it on with the four inches at the top. And I'm going to score at three and a half and at half. And then I'm going to score at one and a half and two and a half. So that should give us a space that's half an inch, one inch, one inch, one inch, half an inch. Okay, because we're going to do a sort of pop up panel on this card so let's pop that out of the way and I think the first thing I'm going to do is just burnish all of these down let's get those nice and tight I'm going to score it this way but I may turn it over because it's slightly better on the other side I feel so my, this white card, it sort of has a dull side and it sort of has a sort of shinier white side. So, and I think the um, shinier white side looks a little cleaner. So that's the side I prefer to use. So that's that piece there. And then we'll go that way. And there. Okay, so all of these half inch ones, they are going to be where we're going to put our glue, which I'm going to use the red line tape today. So let's bring in our card. I'm going to have it tenfold. I just think it looks a little better that way. 
and then if I bring in some scissors and this red liner tape It doesn't matter that it doesn't go all the way along because so I'm going to put some PVA as well. And then I've got to find the end, now it's hiding from me. And this is, um, I've only got the, the thin one at the moment of this red liner tape. If you've got a slightly wider one, maybe a 5mm probably would be better. But with the PVA glue it's going to stick anyway so it'll be fine. And then I'm going to pop it on here. And then before I get confused, what I'm going to do is put this completely out of the way because I don't want to do anything with that until I've done my layers. Okay, so I'm going to save a little bit of card on this one. Um, so you've got two choices. You can do what I'm going to do today or you can cover the whole thing like I normally do. Two notches off the six for gold four not notches off the six for your pattern paper and then go ahead with this one on top um, but I am going to sort of try and conserve a little bit of my um, of my cardstock today so I'm going to start I'm just going to turn that around the right way and I'm going to line that up hopefully It should be exactly the same size, but I can always trim it off if it's not. And I can see it just is turning it over on that side. So we'll just neaten that up. And then what we're aiming to do is to make a cube. Okay, so I find the easiest way to do this is to um, fold over. So you've got your half an inch that's connected to your card. And then you've got one inch, one inch. If you fold it over, take that off, I'll put some of our glue on and you can do the trick I did yesterday with the tabs if you're not sure but then just pop that down and it will go exactly square for you. Okay so that's the easiest way I found in order to um, put those those sort of towers on if you I mean if you wanted to do it that way you can have it as a tower you could put another one on this side balance your topper in between hundreds of ways that you can vary that okay um, but that is the basis of my card today I'm going to bring back in um, this hunky dory trimmer again so this piece here now is um, five inches by six so let's bring in some gold and I did get asked the other day um, why I turned my mirror card upside down and it's just purely because I've got two lights up here um, I don't know you can't see my hands but sort of directly above me here so it lights up my workstation really nicely um, and I just didn't want the the gold to flare up at the camera um, and sort of potentially blind you Okay, so I'm just taking two notches off that five inch mark and two notches off that six and that should fit quite nicely onto there. Um, I'll save that for another day. I'm not going to try and attempt to cut um, one inch. I'm going to have to though at some point. No, I know what I can do. So um, for this piece here and this piece here, so I'm going to decorate those. So I'm going to take this to two notches above the five and that should give me a two notches below the one just because my other trimmer is not working that's the only reason I'm doing it this weird way but that should fit onto there lovely like so and then this one again now I just have to work out where we're at so we're at two above the five so I need to go one two three four above the four and that should give me that same width and it does and then I just need to cut those down two notches under the six that's that piece there um, I'll save the layers for the other piece until later um, I'm going to bring in 
this cardstock which is the printed one and I'm going to take I'm going to have to take it at um, five and three quarters because that is the, the width of our card and then I want a piece that's going to be so that was five so four and three quarters and that should fit quite nicely onto there and it does and then we need to cut two pieces that are going to be three quarters of an inch so at the moment that this piece here is at three three and a half so I need to go down to um, two notches above the three and this is just because I'm working out this piece here that I'm going to be cutting so it's going to be odd if you've got a normal trimmer like that one um, that I was using before then um, you would just need to cut these at um, it's going to be three quarters of an inch no it's not yeah it's going to be three quarters of an inch so we've got a quite a nice border there and then just to make it easy for myself on this next one I'm just going to line this up along here and then we're just going to get that similar sort of edge so we're going to be right there that should be the same and it is going to be off front so let's pop that out of the way so I'm just going to go over those measure measurements again so for gold I've got a piece that's two notches under the five sorry I'd turn that over in case it's flashing two notches under the five and two notches under the six and then I've got two gold pieces to put on my box piece here um, and they are two notches under an inch by two notches under six and I've got two of those and then all I've essentially done is taken another two notches off to get that um, nice thin border all the way around. So that's why that is four and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then these pieces are three quarters by three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters. OK, so I hope I've not confused you too much. So the glues I'm going to be using, they're going to be my usual glue. So in this white, let me just put it because it's just been standing for a little while. So in this white one is the Kalal Tacky glue, which I've just decanted into this small um, container there. It did come from Crafter's Companion. And I was looking for some more the other day because I keep breaking the pins um, and they don't seem to have them anymore. So I have ordered um, a one from... Timu because I was ordering some other stuff from there anyway some storage wallets um, and I'm going to see what that one works like so I see what that one's like I really want a nice fine nib on it like this one I mean it might be a case that I can take that nib off because it does unscrew oh it did unscrew I might, oh no, I might have done it too tight now oh no, here we go no ah here we go we're going, we're going. it's just really slow so it does unscrew so I may be able to put that on another bo bottle um, uh, but we'll see we'll see I've only ordered one just to see how um, a new one would be um, I am a sort of person that gets used to using the bits and pieces that I'm using so it's sometimes a little hard for me to change up and this glue here this is um, the Kalau All Purpose glue um, which I did find a small bottle so I'm just using that up but usually I buy the big bottle and um, these the decanter that I'm using that little bottle I did get that from AliExpress um, somebody did recommend it to me um, and I did try and I get on okay with it um, I do find that the further you get down the bottle you have to wait for it to pour into position which can be a bit frustrating um, so I can continually just top it up all the time so that's how I get around that sort of problem with it but 
Um, you know, it's each to their own. You may have glues that you're using. I mean, I used to use um, pin flares, book binding glue. That's a really good glue as well. Um, I think it's just because I used to buy a lot from Crafters Companion. So we ended up trying this glue and I get on okay with it. So um, that's why it's the glue I like at the moment. Um, but like I say, you know, there are hundreds of different glues out there, you know, so don't feel you've got a swap. If it's working for you, then, you know, that's brilliant. I think this border could have been a little less quite chunky, but we'll live with it for now. A lot of it's going to be hidden anyway, so because we've got this pop-up panel coming on the top. And you don't have to decorate this piece here if you don't want to. Um, I just feel like you do see it quite a bit, so it's worth doing. But And sometimes I just do a bit of gold to go inside. I'm not going to do that today, um, but, you know, if you think it needs it, then, you know, just cut another piece, the same two notches under that inch. Oops, two notches under six. And uh, just pop it on. And I'll just move that out of the way. Just going to pop that in there. It's definitely a lot wider than my normal, so... Obviously I've not guessed that quite right, but it's going to be fine. If I was on my other trimmer, it would be fine. Okay, so now we're coming to this piece here. This is going to be holding our pop-up. So I'm going to peel the um, tape layer off, the backing tape. And I'm going to pop this down. And then what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to about, yeah, we'll go to about there. Just try and get it as straight as possible. And press that down. Okay, so hopefully that should have stuck. There we go. And then all I need to do then, and you can use your red liner tape if you want to. I'm just going to use a bit of this tacky glue. And again, just going to press that down nice and flat. And if you get it, if you glue it while it's flat or flattish, then you know when it's time to put it into a box elope, because it will have to be a box elope, then you know that's all going to go in as flat as it can go. But that is how your card is going to look at the moment. Okay. And I've put it on this side because I felt that this border looked a bit weird upside down. Um, so that's the um, right way up and I kind of felt they felt a bit weird to me on that side I don't know why so that's why I kept them on that side so now I need to do a little bit of uh, matting and layering for this piece here just in case any of it pops through so I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna take a piece of hmm, I have a little bit of spare gold we're done with that Oh, we'll have to use one of those. Put it somewhere safe. Oh, wait, this is it because look, it's, uh, it's the right size. So we know this is four by four. So I'm just going to take that to two notches under four and two notches under four. And that should fit quite nicely onto there. And then two, I want this one. Or do I want this one? Let's just have a little look. Not a lot of it is going to be showing through. I think we're going to go with the leaves. So this needs to be three and three quarters by three and three quarters. way so what I'm going to do is pop 
some all-purpose glue on here and because the um, Kalau Tacky glue is has got a water content to it I prefer just to use these dots in the corner just to keep it in position while I'm working um, but that all-purpose glue still gives me that sort of floatability so I can just get that where I want that to be hopefully with some nice even borders I think that's about as good as I'm going to get and then I can go back to my normal glues here and the reason why I don't use the white glue on this is because it's paper and I find it rocks up so what will happen is it will look lovely my little project and I'll put it on a shelf and then when I come back in a couple of hours time I'll see that it's all bubbled um, the paper's all bubbled because of the glue and I'll tell you there's nothing sadder than working away on a lovely project and being happy with it is usually the ones that you're most happy with um, and then it you know you can't really send it or I feel like you can't send it I can't send it because it looks to me it looks looks horrible okay so now we can look at um, our decoration so I'm just making sure those ends go down I hate it when the ends come up and I think which green fairy should we use? Should we use the slightly older one or the slightly younger one? I think we'll go with this one. So they've both got the same sort of size frame, so it's a decent size frame. Probably going to go over the whole of the card. So we need to make sure that we're going to get that in right. And because it will flip up, um, it's going to have to go in a 7x6 envelope okay so um, even though it's gone flat so it will go in a box loop nicely um, it it will be better off in a seven by six because that's coming over the top you could do away with that by not using the frame um, but I am going to use the frame today so let's just carefully pop her out and it's a really delicate frame on the inside which I do love but they are super hard to get out without damaging. Okay, so if you wanted to keep it as an inner six by six box slope, you would just come in like so. I mean, you could always go across and do something like that. Maybe even bring that down, cut that there, and then bring that across, similar to what I did in my last card. Um, not do that actually should I do that let's let's see it wasn't what I was going to do I was going to go straight up and have her like floating so we could bring that across bring that across pop her in or we could even Bring that to there, cut it here. How would that look if it was? Might. So I'm just debating whether to cut it across the middle here, reduce that frame down. So it's going to come down so it will that top piece will be underneath there and then I can either use um, a piece of this gold to go across uh, sort of just having a nice bit of gold going across or I can come across with this pretty border here which matches in or I can just go with how I thought I was going to have it in the first place and just have it as a nice big element coming out. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, on this occasion, I'm going to carry on as I am. Okay, but just be um, aware, if you didn't want to, you could do that. Just chop this in half, just pop it in your um, trimmer, straight down the halfway line and do it to whatever size you want it so let's say you want it to go in that six by six envelope 
you'll just pop this piece at the bottom slide the other piece over or cut it until it fits and then um, we can pop that one that can go on top you could even put a piece of that um, adorable scoreable behind it with the border across um, you know we could do lots of things okay so um, I'm thinking we'll go around about there I've just got a little bit there and I think probably it would have been better with the adorable scoreable this is a little bit busy on my eye um, but I think I will make do so I'm going to bring in some one millimeter foam pads I've got another little frame there for another day so let's get this popped up and I am going to have to trim these down let's just go straight across and what I want to do is not put any where they're going to be seen so let's put that one there I can put that one there oops I'm going to pop that one there and then I know I can just come around the bottom there and uh, move these around and you know I have mentioned before I do tend to pop quite a lot on this is a little bit skinnier so I'm just going to use this one here and that is just coming over so I'm just going to snip that corner off just so it doesn't poke over the side uh, if you're you know in any doubt just use the little tiny ones okay so like i say i think if i was making this again i would go with the adorable scoreable and that light green i think this is quite busy on a busy frame um and uh yeah it would stand out more if it was just on that plane you could go ahead and emboss it um you may be getting the new embossing folders that are coming out uh, very shortly. Um, I did see them. I like them. I don't know if I want all of them though, because I have got quite a few dotty ones. Um, but then I haven't got any hunky dory dotty ones. So I'm, I'm in an hour. I'm making a little list. You know how it is. I want that decollage. Um, I want some of the, um, some, at least some of these embossing folders, like the zigzag one. Just got that one there, and we know we don't want to go over the top there. Uh, what have you seen lately that you like? I quite like the little topper pads as well, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to work with them all, or do a video on them all, so I don't know. And that decolage is definitely going to be making its way to me because uh, they haven't done a floral one for a while I don't think there's been quite a few animal ones and then there was a Christmas one wasn't there so it's either been a year or over a year but and it is really lovely as well I don't know if you've seen it um, it was on Hunky Dory last week and it was on Hobby with last week as well. Okay, let's pop that in just so we can get our bit lined up. And we can pop beautiful green fairy in when we'd like this for sure. She didn't mind, she didn't mind the old fairy. Right, so I'm just going to wrap some gems, bear with me. Okay, so I'm coming in with these glitter ones. And I've also stolen a sentiment. It's from one of the little book of sentiments. Um, I can't tell you which one it is because I've lost the, the top sheet. But the it's the one with the just for you and your special day on the front pages. 
Um, and I'm assuming that is a more recent one because the other one I've got is 2019 and I tend to buy them every two years or so. So um, I just literally bought the um, the big book of sentiments um, with the Mactastic, um, which I really like as well. So um, you will see those coming up on some of my cards as well. So I'm just having a quick look for where I have decided to hide my tweezers, which I had about 50 pairs here before I started the video. Here we go. So I think what I'll do is pop this on first of all. So let's just grab, uh, let's cut that in half. That's probably going to be all we need. Yeah. And I'm going to go in this top corner here. And I picked the one that says to a very special girl on your big day. Um, the other green one I liked um, was all male themed and I didn't think um, to my brother would cut it, <laughs> not on this one anyway. So I'm going to pop one there, we'll trust the glue, um, I'm going to go one up here and then I'm going to pop one here. And then I'm going to take a big one and if I fold my card up I'm just going to pop two behind there just to keep those odd numbers. You know how weird I am about my odd numbers. Okay, I think that should be it. Yeah, so that's the finished card. Um, if you wanted to, you could even make this smaller. So go to, you could go to maybe three and a half and pretty much most of it would be behind that you'd see a bit more of that background um you could add glitter to this so it sparkles you could emboss this like i say i probably would go with a planar piece here and my mat and elena is not quite right there i think it should have been another mil or two mil bigger but it's not terrible um it's just not the same as that that's all and at the end of the day you've still got a very pretty card that um you know any little girl would would love more a little girl who loves fairies so i'm just going to get set up for card number two so for card number two we've got another piece of six by twelve and we're not going to score it as a six by six card today what we're going to do is we're going to score it at two and four and then I'm going to rotate it around and score it at four. This is going to make me um, a step card. Pop that out of the way. Now I have to turn it around because I've got the smaller scoreboard. If you have got the big scoreboard, you would just be scoring it at two, four and eight. And that would give me these same scores. Oh, that one, that's missing. Okay, so that's the shape of card that we have. So in here you've got four by six size um, for an insert. Um, you could just decorate it like so or turn it round, have it like so. Um, you know, it's up to you, but I am going to do it like this so I can have my fairy coming up above it. Okay, let's grab our little trimmer. Uh, some gold card this is not the six by six card let's have a look see how wide it is it's already two notches and six so i need to go for this piece here is going to be two notches under four by two notches under six that's going to be fine and that should fit on there quite nicely and then this one here is going to be two notches under two. Just going to make sure that's nice and straight. And that should already be two notches under the six. And that is just perfect. And we've got another piece left over for another day. Now, do I want to use it on that bit? No, we don't because it's got the fairy on. Okay, so I'm going to come along... 
and I'm going to cut down at the five and three quarters and I'm going to go let's see I'm going to go one two three so three and three quarters just with this plain green tiny little butterfly on the bottom but really not going to see that that's going to be hidden away at the bottom and then I want a piece to go on here and that's going to be one and three quarters or four notches under I want as much of this green as I can so one two three four and that's going to go into there so now I don't know if I want the edge. Let's try and see what that's going to look like. Would that look better? Mm. Well, let's cut it and see. It's not going to do any harm, is it? Um, so let's just cut that one and three quarters again. Slightly smaller, so it might come a little better. I think it looks better with the smaller green piece, so we will use that one. Uh, we've got those pieces left over, so this is going to be a lot faster of a card. So, I'm going to use my all purpose glue over the back. Oops tacky in my corners just to pop those down and you could use just one glue or the other what I would say to you is if you're just using the all-purpose glue just be careful you don't get it on your mirror card because it can take the shine off and uh, and the tacky glue is fine on its own as long as you're using the cardstock Okay, so let's turn that around so that my butterfly is going into that fold. Pop that in. Okay. And then again. Oops. And the thing I like about this bottle is it just puts such a thin amount of that glue on. It really does dispense a nice amount, but like I say, not uh, they're not for everybody. Some people don't like um, the fact that you have to keep refilling them. Just a little bit of tissue because I've got a bit of tacky glue on there. Just polish these edges. And the tacky glue will wipe off the gold mirror. Um, the all-purpose just takes the shine off with it so if you ha do happen to get any um, all-purpose glue on it then just leave it just walk away either try and cover it with um, a butterfly a gem or your topper um, but wait for it to dry and uh, even when it's dry it won't make as much of a mess as if you try to take it off okay so that's what we've got at the moment a little card like so nice cute little card and it will go in a four by six envelope as well this one but you probably would have to have a box envelope, um a slightly thicker one um right okay let's move oh, i've got some glue coming at the edge there i'm not quite sure why but we'll sort that out in a second so let's pop this little cute fairy out um I think we'll go might use this one side by side or miles apart you are forever close to my heart because that's quite a cute little sentiment isn't it so and it will fill up this space down here quite nicely okay so again we're popping them out come on that's it and if you get any bits that you can see sometimes where the pips have been attached you might see a little tuft of white you could just go around that with your knife or your scissors um, sometimes you can just smooth them down with your nail just tucks 
them under I find the worst places are the inside of frames to be honest but there we go okay so where do I want this so let's have a little see I think probably we want our fairy on that side obviously if I'm going to come above it's not going to go in a six uh, four by six envelope so I am going to aim to keep it to the um, six by six so it means I'm probably have to, gonna have to come down quite low with it let's see yeah so I need that to go to about there and then that to go there and then it's going to go in my normal six by six envelope so we've got another little fine frame there that we can save for the little book so I'm going to pop that to the side and if I fold that down a second and I want the pads again we're going to be cutting into them so I am just a tiny bit above there sorry if you can hear my tummy rumbling my sister just made a roast dinner so I'm not hungry it's just just my dinner going down Really nice. She does a good roast dinner. She does them quite often, to be honest. I try not to. <laughs> oh, let's put that one there so we know where it is. And then, come on, you. I'm going to have you. Yeah, let's put that off. And then we just need to put these pads on. And this is quite a good card shape to use these sort of longer toppers on as well. You know, like to just have it coming over the top. Um, you're still using the same um, amount of cards. You know, it's still that like 6 by 12. And you can do it really with any size cardstock. If you wanted to go to um, sort of 8 by 8 size, then obviously just make sure you've got... Um, you divide your card up equally. So you're going to divide it into three um so you've got because these three are all the same size this bit's obviously divided in half so you're going to divide whatever card uh, shape or size you've got into three and then that last panel you're going to divide in half again um, for your score okay so you can literally apply it to i don't know why that's sticking to me um any sort of size card you want really um, it's just that I sort of, I don't know why, I'm slightly addicted to the 6x6 six six at the moment. I kind of feel like it's that halfway point we have before you've got a massive card, which I used to love. I think because I came, um, I start, when I started it was because I was looking for scrapbooking things to do a life story book. Um, so I came from like 8x8 eight eight and 12x12 12 12 pieces of paper, so... The big cards, the 8x8 cards, and that were really uh, a quite a, a comfortable size. And then for a while, there was quite a few at that time cards where um, sort of what we would call an A5, which is like a, a piece of A4 folded in half. That was quite a common size as well. Um, and then I don't know quite why, but then I ended up with six by six, and I really do like a six by six. I think there's plenty of room to um, add your details on, and not so much room that you're like, oh, how do I fill this space? You know. Right. What did I do with that little frame? Let's pop you in again. We we'll use you to help us figure out where this needs to be. Might as well get it in the right place. And if I can get these off, that would be fantastic. I think next time I'm going to come back with the blue fairy. So um, purple is actually my favourite colour. I think most, a lot of crafters are either you know quite purpley uh, or lovers of the colour purple. Um, but after purple blue so that's why we're going to go with blue next I mean all the fairies are cute to be fair so you could go with whichever one and I think those purple fairies would suit this type of card as well because they were quite long toppers as well um, I can't really see the blue ones from where I'm sitting so I 
can't tell you whether the blue one would fit on here as well. I'll have a little look in a minute. Okay, so let's just press that gold frame down. I'm just going to pop that on. Oh, I've got one at the top again. Look, I have every time. Okay, what I'm going to do... I haven't got my knife with me today. See, I remember to do it with a frame, but I didn't remember with this. So what I can do is peel that off. It is going to be messy. Or messier than I would have liked, that's for sure. Let's peel that frame out before we do anything else. Do you know, I was just thinking, oh, nothing's gone wrong. Apart from that little border, maybe. Okay, let's get you out. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just peel that back. And if you've got your knife, what you can do is just put your knife underneath and just take it back. But what I'll do is I'll take the sticky bit off and then I'll leave it a little while um, until everything's dry. I'm just using my scissors as a knife there. And, and then what I'll do is I'll use my glue eraser and see if that takes that little bit of mess off. Just super carefully, so apologies. Yeah, make sure you do what I did with a frame and um, look where you're putting your frames, look where you're putting your topper, and don't be talking. Right, okay, so that is where we are at the moment. Okay, so we've got this in, so this one needs to go on. I'm just gonna pop. all we're going to need for that and then we'll need to find some gems I want to use some different gems so oh look I've got covered in glue now look oh disaster okay so let's just be super careful okay bear with me a second while I just clean this mess up and um, get some gems okay so we're going to decide which ones to use, whether to use these lovely bright green ones, which if I put my little piggy up at all, I'll use this for now. These are super green, real dark, like proper emerald green. Let's grab that. So those ones or we should go with the clear which will pick up the green anyway and I think we'll go with the clear ones because they seem to be a little bit bigger so these I think were paper mania ones so let's just pop three on that side there And then I'm going to go with two smaller ones on this side here. Okay, let's put those out of the way. And then just to finish, so when I was um, going through my bits and pieces, I found this little tiny butterfly die. It's a Spellbinders one. And I think it's a, a die light one. Uh, which came with, it's called Di Light, um, and it came with a tree, I believe. Um, it has been separated from its tree. But um, the thing I like about these, and I don't know whether you'd be able to see it, but they're quite, even though they're, they're sort of embossed as well, so they have got a bit of detail to them. So let's grab my poker tool. And we're going to pop some in this space here. I think we'll just go one, two, mm, should I put one over here? Let's put one over here, it's flying over to meet its friends. So if I pop them down and just 
And if, if you can't find or if you haven't got this Spellbinders one or you haven't got any small ones, um, Crafter's Companion had a confetti die with lots of um, tiny little butterflies on. I've also got that upstairs. Um, that's not come down into my sorting room yet. Um, and I think Hunky Dory also has, it's not called a confetti die for Hunky Dory though. I think it's called like a cut in die. If I can find it, I'll link it. Because what I'm going to try and start doing is um, putting the details of what I'm using in the description so that you sort of, because uh, I do get a lot of questions about, you know, what I've used here and what I've used there. Um, so I will try and put the links in um, the description. It is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me, so please do bear with me. Um, but I am going to attempt to do that going forward. So I'm just trying to get that to dry a little bit upright. I've got those little wings. But that's that finish one. What I did do um, just while I was looking for the gems as well, I just popped a little bit of paper on there. I did um, use my eraser rubber. Um, and that that made it more black and noticeable to be honest with you which was a bit of a pain um, and uh, so that's why I decided to cover it so I just popped a piece over the, the back drew around it with my pokey tool actually um, and then just cut around it roughly if you've got the die to match this then that would be even better um, I could also although I think that might be a little bit too small uh, or too big rather I could possibly match up that edge which I may do later we'll, we'll have I might have a little fiddle with that later but we will see but that is that card um, and obviously that's how it is going to sit on um, a um, side uh, a shelf a window ledge um, and then obviously we've got this one as well so let me just pop those down side by side so those are the two cards that I've got finished today um, I've still got quite a bit left so I've got this um, beautiful little fairy here um, I've got these two tags with many happy returns and the butterflies they don't have to necessarily be used with that I've got this piece with the foil on and I've also got that piece of printed uh, with the beautiful fairy on which I can use on another card and I will be doing um, I have got some more cards done that I am going to put on Pinterest um, as part of my um, card challenge. So I'll put those on there first and then I'll put these two on there last so that these will be at the top just in case you wanted to go and have a closer look at them. Like I say, this uh, matting and layering on here is not perfect. Um, it could have done, obviously my, my head is not working out maths. Mind you, before everything happened, my head would not work out maths anyway, but... Um, I am going to have to sort out that trimmer. Um, uh, I have got another trimmer. I think I've got um, a stamping up trimmer upstairs. And I did find some blades for it. So I might swap for that in the meantime. Uh, we'll give that a go uh, next time I come back. So next time I'm coming back with the blue fairy. Sorry, that's my chair. Oh, and my circles and ovals on that one. So... Um, going to be able to make some nice um, cards with that quite a few little sentiments on there as well born to stand out wishing you a day as wonderful as you just for you sent with love and fairy hugs which is quite nice because we've got those nice birthday sort of greetings on there which we like to see um but that's it for me today thank you so much for watching um thank you for your continued support i cannot tell you how much i really do appreciate it but see you next time happy crafting Bye bye